Part 2 of the presentation looks at frequently used data to describe and assess programs, common types of techniques to analyze program review data, and common methods to summarize, present, and understand data. Later, we will present illustrations and a matrix of how you can specifically use data in various parts of the program review report. But here, we want to briefly look at this topic. Here, we examine how you can use data in the program review process. First, you can use data to describe your program, including a description of your mission, program components, and program activities. Second, you can use data to provide evidence, including evidence that you have moved closer to your three to five year strategic directions, achieved your program goals, and completed activities to support those goals. Third, you can use data to assess the effectiveness of program components in terms of program content and delivery and to assess outcomes, that is, to document student learning or administrative unit objectives. Fourth, you can use data to support requests for resources. Finally, and this point is largely an amalgamation of the former points, you can use data to support program improvement. Up to this point, we have examined why and how you use data in program review, but what types of data are frequently used in the process? Answering this question will lead us to more practical questions about how you collect and report data for a program review report. Here, we identify three broad types of data. Program data, institutional data, and primary data. Turning now to the first type of data, program data is typically locally collected and recorded used to offer services and support a program's or unit's mission, and generally not reported or submitted to Management Information System, or MIS, which we'll look at in a moment. Examples of program data include program applications, assessment or intake forms, diagnostic instruments, student or client demographics, course evaluations, that is, student-faculty evaluations, and services offered to students or clients that are recorded and documented locally. In contrast to program data, institutional data is currently and anticipated to be accessed through three sources. First, Management Information System, or MIS, is a statewide multipurpose data collection system of the California Community College's Chancellor's Office with data collected from 72 districts and 109 colleges in each term for the following areas. Student demographics, courses, sections, and enrollments, program awards, CalWORKs, DSPS, EOPS, financial aid, and matriculation. Second, the college's data warehouse, which is anticipated to allow access to relational databases in PeopleSoft. And finally, locally developed reporting tools for PeopleSoft provide additional sources of data. Unlike program and institutional data, primary data is unique in that you determine what, how, and how long you want to collect data directly from students or clients. You also do much of the work yourself to collect the data, but the rewards are obvious. A set of data that is developed by you, grounded in your program, and responsive to your interests and needs. Types of data collection tools range from questionnaires to surveys to focus groups and personal interviews and finally to document and archival data. In the preceding slides we touched on issues ranging from your role in requesting data and analytical support from the Office of Research and Planning to the types of data available to you for program review. Now, we want to focus on articulating interests and data needs so that you are able to effectively assess your program or unit. Here, we are looking at your interests and needs and what types of data tend to address those interests and typically meet those needs. First, if you are interested in understanding students' experiences and students' perceptions, you would want to use primary data like surveys, focus groups, or interviews. By contrast, if you are interested in examining historical trends or comparisons between student groups, you would want to use both primary and institutional data. For example, 
you could conduct a survey and match the raw data set with an institutional data set to understand a more comprehensive set of attitudes or events. Finally, if you're interested in exploring the general program context or the quantity or quality of services or units to students or clients, you may want to use any of these three types of data. Primary data, institutional data, or program data. For example, if you responded to 3,000 service requests last year, you could use program data to describe the service or clients. Once you have data, you may wonder how you can go about analyzing raw data. Here, you may want to rely on the expertise of the staff in the Office of Research and Planning. Or, you may feel comfortable performing the analyses yourself. Whichever the case, we want to call your attention to common types of analyses used in program review. In social science research, we frequently conceptualize methods as qualitative or quantitative. To be sure, there are more complex and exhaustive ways of epistemologically, philosophically, and pragmatically looking at these approaches. For parsimony, however, we'll look at analytical techniques appropriate for data collected qualitatively, including content analysis and thematic analysis. By contrast, analytical techniques appropriate for data collected quantitatively include descriptive techniques, including frequencies, measures of central tendency, dispersion and distribution, cross-tabulations, cross-sectional or comparative analyses, and longitudinal or historical analyses. In addition, quantitative analyses include inferential techniques, including t-tests and ANOVAs to examine differences among groups, and correlations and regressions to examine relationships among variables and to predict outcomes or group membership. Once you have data collected and analyzed, there is a need to make sense of the results by summarizing and presenting them in meaningful units. Again, in the social sciences, this is typically done through the use of tables and graphs. With tables and graphs, you want to include a title, the number of observations or respondents, for example, in a survey, the percentage that is represented by observations or category, and Finally, the source of the data. Just as important are narratives, which often accompany tables or graphs. With narratives, you typically want to include a description of the results and trends in the data, and an account of salient issues and concerns from data analysis. With the narrative, the goal is to tell the story of the data. The final step in the process that we have described is an understanding of what the results mean. Here, you want to make sense and interpret the results for their implications for what you do in your program or unit. With this in mind, a good place to start is right in your program and with your colleagues. This is what we refer to as the local context. At the program, department, or unit level, you are the experts and are best suited and equipped to provide insight into what results mean. Indeed, you have the institutional saga, or story, and can examine historical and contextual issues in your program or unit. This is where meaningful discussion, dialogue, and reflection are important exercises. To be sure, external sources are available to help you more systematically approach the results and interpret them. For example, state reports or guides like the Program Improvement Resource Guide for Community College Instructional Programs are available at the Chancellor's Office. In addition, we recommend that you consult research resources or monographs, particularly ones on evaluation research and others on issues or topics relevant to your own program. Finally, we encourage you to contact the Office of Research and Planning here at Cerritos College for assistance with this task.